Uh, I mean, I think there are many, it's a bit, there are many forces working. I think one that I'd really want to draw out was the focus on reliability. Uh, most things in medicine hap happen with a 60 to 70 percent reliability. Uh, and if you compare that with other industries, that's, that's very poor. And in order to deliver reliable care, doctors have to behave differently and the systems they work with uh, have to um, kind of promote uh, the reliability that is getting to the 90-95% mark. So inevitably it means that we work more with computers um, and computerization of medicine offers the possibility that uh, some of the um, problems related to late or misdiagnosis can be circumvented by prompts coming from within the system. So reliability is one. The other, I think, really important movement over the past 20 years has been a, a focus on the safety of patients. Uh, patient safety has always been important, but it's never beyond, you know, over the, over the past 20 years, it really has become um, a major concern to hospitals, to primary care, that the patients that come into our care are, are looked after safely. Uh, and misdiagnosis is a major element in undermining patient safety that we recognise we have to address. I, I would agree and reinforce what, what David said. I mean, I think if one looks back over several hundred years, <coughs> the, the key sort of facts in the history of, of the world, there are many key facts, uh, but one is the Industrial Revolution in the sort of 18th, early 19th century that transformed the world from an agrarian economy to a sort of manufacturing based economy and transformed everything that we do, the quality of all of our lives. So that was clearly a dominant fact in, in world history. But actually in the past 30 years, certainly since I came into medicine in the late 70s, I strongly believe we've, we've lived through an identical transformation in medicine. There's been a medical revolution. If I look at my old medical student notes, largely speaking, uh, people came into hospital with a syndrome. We gave symptom relief, morphine, perhaps a diuretic, whatever it was, uh, some simple stuff. If you had a cancer, we cut it out. If you had appendicitis, we cut it out. But it was pretty simple stuff. Didn't know what was going on in the brain. So it was very simple stuff. Much of it was just documenting the natural history of conditions, to be brutally honest. And uh, diagnosis mattered, but not much. Wind the clock forward to where we are now. We have supremely good diagnostics and treatment really matters. We've, we've got many medical treatments for heart failure. We've got good surgical treatments. It doesn't mean that people don't die, they die horribly. Uh, cancer, we have good targeted, fantastic therapies. So we've lived through a revolution where we can diagnose much more accurately and it matters because the treatments really matter. And that means that what was the situation 40 years ago, uh, where diagnosis was nice but not vital, has been transformed. We now need to apply all that knowledge to the vast mass of our population and make sure that whether you come into hospital in the United Kingdom in uh, a small district hospital or a big teaching hospital or whether you see a GP in the Lake District or one in central London, you get uh, the right approach to your condition at the right time with the right therapy. So it's, it's translating this vast bulk of knowledge and technique and information into care across the community that eradicates those treatments that don't work and applies that those that do work at the right time.